Recently, I went through a very stressful few months. I'll spare you the intimate details as I covered the whole sequence of events in a previous video, but basically, my whole family got very sick, almost full circle three times in a row. Stomach flu, cough, cold, infections, bronchitis, one after the other. Being le mami, as sick as I was, I still rolled up my sleeves and took care of my family. Duh, of course, every parent does that. But then, when there were moments available for me to rest, I instead doubled down on my work, staying up late while fighting back an 101 degree fever. I'm fine, I'd keep telling myself. I'm pumped full of Advil and caffeine. There's absolutely no way this could go wrong. Oh, how wrong it did go. I suddenly began to have random fits of sweating, shaking, and dizziness that would completely stop me in my tracks. Eventually, I was forced to take a break because my body simply would not let me carry on the way I was. This whole course of events made me look differently at the way I work as a modern day woman in her late 20s, an artist nonetheless one of the notoriously most underpaid professions. But the revelation that I had and the information I'm about to share with you isn't just for artists who paint, it's for anyone trying to create content in a modern online space. But before I get into the meat and potatoes of today's video essay, let me take a quick moment to talk about today's sponsor. Today's video was brought to you in part by Skillshare.com. Skillshare is an online learning platform dedicated to helping you learn a new skill. They've got more than 25,000 classes in art, cooking, business, and so much more. Their premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can hop around the site until you find what classes are right for you. What's great is their annual subscription rate is less than $10 a month. That's way cheaper than signing up for a class at your local community college. I'll be honest, I have a great business relationship with the people at Skillshare because they're all about supporting small creators. That's the foundation their company is built on. Every creator on their site puts tons of effort into their lessons, like Tabitha the park and her class DIY backdrops dynamic surfaces for tabletop photography. When I say out of all of the courses I've taken so far, this one made the biggest change with the least amount of effort, I mean it. This brief course was concise, organized, and straight to the point, and I loved it. I'm ready to go out to my local Home Depot and load up on even more cool tiles and boards to take more interesting pictures of my artwork. Make sure to click the link in the description for two months of Skillshare Premium for free, just to try it. So why don't you learn something new today with Skillshare? So because I'm an artist creating art in an ever-changing online world, I feel the need to work constantly. Otherwise, I feel like I'm wasting precious time and resources. I feel like this is true across the board with pretty much every type of creator online or off. We work towards an opportunity that gives us the potential to make money doing the things we love. So of course, we pour every ounce of energy we have into it. We make false promises to ourselves that we will eventually settle into a routine where food, sleep, and recreational time will be included. But because we've got our hearts set on doing what we love for a living, we let those important things continue to slide. We think that because this opportunity is laid out before us, if we don't literally kill ourselves working, it will disappear overnight. For YouTubers, that fear is especially prevalent due to the vicious ebb and flow of the YouTube algorithm and who it decides to promote or not. But it's really true for any content creator, as their primary platform could be bought out and gone in the blink of an eye. Even really popular platforms. I mean, look what happened to Vine. There were hundreds of incredibly popular content creators on Vine getting their videos shared with millions of people to the point where it created a massive social change in middle and high schools around the world. I would argue that Vine literally defined the humor of Generation Z. I accidentally wore my little house booties out the other day and I had my friend's nephew yell, what are those, at me. It was a strange moment because I felt kind of cool with the kids because I knew what he was saying, but also like really lame because I was the person who was being, what are those? -d? There was a lot of internal conflict for me in that moment. But my point is that even the most popular and successful platforms will have an expiration date at some point. Job security is literally impossible while working independently in online content creation, and that's really scary. Not only that, but if your content is not labeled as 100% family friendly, you run the risk of your work potentially being suppressed by the very platform that allows you to broadcast your content in the first place. It's the most double-edged sword there 
creator ever was, and I could go on and on about all the reasons content creators play hot potato juggling with their work schedule. The point is that most of us are hustling. Hustling, hustling, all day hustling, to the point where we forget to eat a full meal or sleep more than four hours a night. So now that I've given a basic layout of some concerns we creators are known to have, let's try and break down this hyper-focused work pattern and see when and why creator burnout occurs. Initially, the routine feels right. We love the work we do, so we crave more of it. It keeps us sharp, inspired, and feeling really productive. We wake up each morning with a purpose, and the purpose just so happens to be something we've loved since we were seven, so goals, right? Well, sort of. You're now at the point where you've been at this routine for months. You're starting to feel worn out, but you feel guilty for feeling worn out. I cannot believe I'm even having thoughts of being tired. I am so lucky to be able to do this for a living, and it would be wrong of me to ever complain, even in this monologue in my head. You tell yourself. So you push through the exhaustion. You suck it up and keep going. You know what? No. F*** it. You double down and work harder because how dare you even think about taking some time to yourself. Not everyone can be afforded this opportunity and you need to be grateful and take advantage of what's been given to you. Well, not given to you what you've rightfully worked for because you started from zero like everyone else, but still gotta work harder because it's what you love and if you really love it you've got to put your blood sweat and tears into it so now it's almost been a full year of going like this and you're starting to exhibit some strange physical and mental side effects you notice that if you have any less than six cups of coffee just in the morning you get a searing headache your hair is falling out a lot more than normal and when you're drifting off to sleep at night you have these horribly depressing thoughts about why you aren't good enough. Now every morning when you wake up, instead of feeling like you have a purpose, you feel like you've trapped yourself. But still, the feeling of guilt persists. You're not allowed to be depressed. You get to do what you love for a living. How grateful you are to even think you have depression when there are people really suffering in this world. And that guilt eats you alive. You sit down to start on your next creation when all of a sudden nothing. You've got three ideas laid out before you, but no real idea on how to approach them. They seem empty, meaningless. It's not like you don't love the thing you love to do anymore. It's that you don't love you doing the thing you love to do. You feel like you don't add anything meaningful to it anymore. What's the point? You've been completely emptied out and you feel like you're just a husk of your former self and now you have to go in front of the people that believe in you the most and let them all down. Or so you think. Please remember that people are largely understanding. When you're in crisis, funnily enough, the people who want you to heal the most are those that want to consume your content the most. These core viewers are people who have grown to know you through your content and feel a connection with you because what you've produced has connected to them in some way. So to those of you that are at that final stage of creator burnout, please don't be afraid to be honest with the people around you, whether that be an online viewer base or your friends, family, or co-workers. Everyone has a right to feel pain. It's one of the only certain things we are guaranteed in this life is to feel pain. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, even if that anyone is you. And I understand it's very difficult to combat feelings like that, but something I heard recently really struck a chord with me and I hope it does with you as well. There are two men in a hospital room. One has a broken arm and one is in a full body cast. They're both in pain. Their situations may be very different, but no matter what, they are both in pain. So from here, let's talk about how we can tackle creative burnout together and how we can try to avoid it in the future. First off, if your number one fear is losing everything overnight, I've got one word for you. Diversify. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Create different projects and cross-promote across different platforms. Get a Ko-Fi, a Patreon. Create additional content on a personal website. Create a way for your audience to interact somehow on any platform. That way, if something goes wrong in one place, you can keep everyone updated on another. Make sure that in diversifying your content, you're not accidentally overloading yourself even more. If you start another endeavor that requires a lot of energy, another project will have to have 
the reins pulled back a little. For example, if I wanted to upload multiple videos a week, I would have to close my Patreon because I just wouldn't have time to design and create the rewards for my Patreon anymore. I would also have to put to babes in preschool all day, every day, five days a week, or I couldn't get much done. I'm running on a tight schedule now, but it's going well for me. I enjoy the quiet, close nature of my Patreon group, and I certainly enjoy spending quality time with my son during the week. But you see what I mean as an example. Another tip is to write it down. Figure out what activities demand the most energy and time out of you and why. Once you do that, try to arrange your activity list in a way that makes sense with your daily routine. For example, if you know that you have the least amount of energy in the morning and the most energy after lunch, put the more energy exhausting activity after lunch and some lighter fare in the morning. You also wanna write down or at the very least acknowledge when you start to feel worn out. The very first step to any and all recovery is identification. When you're finally able to identify what's pushing you over the edge, you can use that clarity to help confront it head on. For example, instead of trying to tackle one large task all at once, you can break it down into smaller, more manageable parts. Not only does it make it easy for you to organize your day by shuffling these tasks around, it gives you a break from a potentially monotonous activity. It also gives you a greater sense of achievement as you complete each part. Another helpful tip is to make recreational non-working time mandatory. This does not include checking your work socials, by the way. I'm talking about completely completely shutting off your brain from work, like most people do when they come home from their nine to fives. I understand there will be days where you will have to work overtime, just like everyone else on this planet, but those days cannot dominate your week or month or year. Crunch time is an important part of being a working citizen, and it's a super important part of being self-employed, but this whole video is about how you're doing too much crunch time. You've gotta learn how to deprogram yourself from constantly thinking about work. Work. I know it might seem impossible, but I promise you it can be done. Start off by trying to unplug altogether. It's too tempting to hop onto a public social media when you're browsing your private Facebook. Don't worry, you will get this privilege back, but only once you feel like you're a little bit more in control. Now that you've unplugged, Find an activity you love doing that doesn't have a super high energy requirement, like light home workouts, reading, watching a movie, playing some music, something that can help you kind of wind down at the end of the night, that can help collect your focus. Once your brain starts to automatically unwind, even before you've started these activities, that's when you can start slowly incorporating your phone back into the formula. Look, the most important tip I could ever give you is to make time. Make time for your family, make time for your friends, make time for those other activities you love that got shoved to the wayside. Make time for you. Yes, even if that means setting a daily reminder on your phone to step away from work, you need to do it. Your mental and physical health is far too valuable to do otherwise. It's wonderful that you found a way to make a living off of doing something you love, but if you're slowly killing yourself while doing it, then you're not really making a living. Hey guys, I wanted to include one bonus tip for people who are working their butts off to try and make their hobby into a full-time gig, but are still having to work another job on the side. Remember what I said about how if you put a ton of energy into one thing, you have to pull the reins back on another? That includes when you have to work two jobs. If it's in order to eat and have shelter, you need to be putting more time into the job that makes you a better living. That's just a fact, right? However, that doesn't mean to give up on your other hobby job. It simply means it will probably take a little bit longer to establish that job. So when you pull back the reins on the quote unquote hobby job, it's not stopping the progress by any means. It's just prolonging the end goal a little bit, which really isn't that bad of a deal. If this helps at all, I have this mantra that is true across all genres of creation, but I use it in reference to art the most. But it goes like this. It is impossible to stop improving unless you literally never draw again for the rest of your life because even when you're not drawing, you're still improving by absorbing the things around you. But if you never draw again, there is no way to realize that progress. Just hang in there, I believe in you, and please don't overwork yourself. Even if you get to a point where you really truly don't think you can turn your hobby into a job or a way to make money, just remember that what is life at the end of the day but doing the things that we love and spending time with the people that we love. Work is just a way for us to afford to be able to do the things that we love in our spare time. So don't despair and try to look at the little beautiful things 
that happen in your life every single day. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to stay out of trouble. I'll see you guys later.